Wow. I'm genuinely surprised. So I just hit 200 for one. And it's not so much about the number or whatever. It's how I felt under that weight. That's the thing. It's not the, the weight on the bar. Yes, it's good that I hit 200 for one. I haven't hit that for a little while, especially at home. For some reason at home, weights feel heavier and whatever, or stiffer bar, concrete floor. There's no, no give anywhere, right? When you're on a platform in the gym with a whippy bar, I feel like you just bounce out of the bottom and you just hang on the bar and I don't know what it's worth, but maybe another five, 10 kilos or something like that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point of the point of this video is that I feel good. I feel poppy. I didn't really change much except yesterday I started jumping. Jumping. I did 25 freaking jumps. Standing, stationary, vertical leaps. Five by five. That's what I did. Yesterday I spoke about how I'm scared of jumping because of the ligaments, the tendons, the meniscus, the, all these structures which I haven't been training for the last decade ever since I stopped playing basketball. And I feel very unathletic, I feel very stiff, I feel very unexplosive. Even though I can still jump up and grab the, the ring on the basketball court uh, at the 25 kilos of extra weight since last time I played competitive basketball, even though I've kind of added all this muscle and whatever, I don't have ex explosiveness with it. Yesterday I, I, I jumped, you guys saw it, five by five, you know, very awkward, you know, not coordinated jumping technique, all of that, it's been a very long time. This morning I woke up and I'm like, okay, let me let me not do five by five, let me do like seven by three or something like this. Seven sets of three jumps. Hopped around a little bit, got warm, jumped, seven sets of three, no worries. I get under the bar and the thing feels like a freaking feather, man. Like a freaking feather. Now I've done many, many different things leading up to a squat session. This feels like I did pin squats. This feels exactly like pin squats. When you go up to 300 kilos for a millimeter of range of motion pin squat, you get to the normal bar, the normal squat, and you feel weightless. I feel like this jumping has done this for me, except minus 300 kilos through my freaking system. So it's that potent. You know, I've spoken about pin squats at nauseam you know, how good it is and what I think is going on and whatever. Lots of people have disagreed. Lots of people agreed. But it does something to the central nervous system, rate of force development, all that stuff. Like you are you are fighting this thing which is unnatural. Like it's way too heavy for one more millimeter of range of motion. Jumping, I feel like has done this. Like I am putting all my might into this thing, which is this motion of jumping. Kind of like pin squats, you are putting everything into that bar to get it to break the bar off the pins. Except this, I feel like it's very early on, is much, much cheaper, like much cheaper because there's no axial loading. However, the stuff below the knees, the knees down, this potentially can be a problem moving forward because of the landing forces. I don't know whether you guys know about this or not, but like some of the most uh, what should I say? Some of the most, the most force that our body um, withstands is when we run. Now, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't. But when you are running and you're landing on one foot, you're basically hopping along, right? That's what running is. You're basically jumping on one foot, jumping on one foot. So your body weight landing on one foot is a lot more force going through that particular limb than it is to do a one rep max squat. Because there is acceleration, there's gravity, and then there's one foot. And so if you know about physics, the whole stiletto effect, right? If you, if you uh, lay down on a hundred freaking thousand nails, it's not going to pierce your skin. But if you lay down on one nail, it's going to go through your skin. It's going to be very, very painful. It's kind of that thing. The, the wider, the, the larger the surface area of whatever you were talking about, the less force is going through it. I'm doing a bad job explaining this. I'm not a mathematician or a physicist. Um, but it's essentially like if you were to hop on two feet as you're running, which is impossible, like a kangaroo, right? There will be less force going through your system than if you're doing a one foot. And so when you jump, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but that landing, that acceleration, the gravity, you know, what is it? 9.8 seconds per seconds, uh, 
9.8 meters per second squared. I think that's the, the rate of acceleration of gravity. Anyway, you guys are gonna laugh at me. It's been a long, long time since I've done physics and maths and all that stuff. But what I got out of it is that speed, acceleration, velocity is, is, is much, much worse than the actual mass of whatever we're talking about. Speed kills, right? And it's true throughout nature. Um, I'm gonna throw another freaking equation out. What is it? Mass times acceleration squared. Or is it mass times velocity squared or something like that? That's force. Force equals ma squared or something like that. I don't even know what I'm talking about. The point is, is that jumping is very, very hard on your skeletal system. It's hard on your ligaments and your tendons. So even though it might seem that the pin squats are much, much worse for you, the fact that there's no landing, there's no sudden impact through your system after accelerating down through gravity, um, it feels like from outside in, I mean, I'm not, maybe somebody can do the math or whatever. It feels like it's a lot worse to do that. Like when, when people are doing depth jumps, I think that's what they call when they're jumping off a box, they leap into the ground and land on the ground. Like they're trying to load that eccentric that eccentric uh, portion of that movement as much as possible, that landing, that shock, you know, uh, it does something to the ligaments of the tendons and the tendons becomes thicker, stronger. And the, the theory is that you will be able to store and, and like, a, like a band, you will be able to store and respond better uh, kind of energy transfer, right? Um, and this is where like genetics come into play. You can think about some of the, you know, uh, people that come from Africa, you know, their, their calves, look a lot different than somebody that comes from Yugoslavia, right? You know, we have these like fuller calves, the muscle bellies are much larger. Where you look at somebody from Sudan, like it's nothing. There's no, there's no freaking belly at all in the calf. It's just all Achilles tendon. And then there's a small ball at the top. And so when you look at somebody like that, they're going to have better ability to transfer their force because the Achilles tendon is much better at, you know, resisting force than the actual muscle. Um, so, Having said all of that, I feel great jumping, but I am cautious about the whole thing about how I'm going to pull up in the next few days. Um, but something, now, now, now I'm hearing Louis Simmons in my mind. You are not doing anything if you're not training for speed. You have to train for speed. He always talked about speed day is very, very important because that's when you realize, that's when you teach your body to move quickly. And that's what you need to do when you're doing max, max, um, Max weight, like you, nobody, nobody does one rep max taking their time. You're putting everything into it. You're accelerating the bar as much as possible. And so we can mimic that essentially with 60%, 70% weight on the bar, whatever the case might be. Or we can jump, we can sprint. We can, you know, do all sorts of athletic things like this. Um, I feel great now, I feel like an athlete. Two days of jumping and I actually feel feel explosive now it's weird man it's so weird like i haven't added any muscle in the last freaking 24 hours i haven't what i think has happened is that my nervous system is woken up and it's moving quickly there's like a spark to it thinking back to my basketball days i wasn't the best shooter i wasn't the tallest guy i wasn't the best playmaker but there was very very few guys when i was growing up that were quicker than me my first and second step was very very quick all the running drills i was basically if not the first, one of the two or three. Uh, so that was always my strength. I could guard guards, lock guards down. I could re run very, very quickly. Like I said, I wasn't the most skillful and whatever, but I had this athleticism, natural athleticism from, I guess, playing soccer as a kid and then genetics. So that's kind of my background. And so now that I've done this, it's kind of like my body's gone, all right, so this is what we're meant to do kind of thing. Um, so let's see, I'm going to try and do some jumps every single day that I come in here. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be very, very, you know, close monitoring how my Achilles feels, my shins. I've had shin splits in, in the past playing basketball, running around a lot. How my knees feel, you know, those are my biggest concerns. Knees and, and the Achilles complex, that whole foot region, that's going to be my concern. But today, 200 for one. Um, and I think the only difference there is that I did some jumps and worked my body up. So if you haven't tried to try it, I don't know what the mechanisms exactly behind it is. I've kind of told you what I think is going on. I'm sure there's guys out there who are experts at athleticism and track and field and all that. Maybe some of you guys can shed some more light of what's going on with me. But uh, the pin squats and simply jumping have done similar things to me and how I've performed in the squat.
Appreciate all of you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.